How about a refreshing and slightly tangy basil lemon drop martini? This cocktail is perfect for a light lunch or as a refreshing after dinner drink. It combines the citrusy notes of lemon with the herbal aroma of fresh basil. Ingredients 1. 2 ounces, 60 milliliters, vodka. 2. 3 quarters of an ounce, 22.5 milliliters, triple sec or contro. 3. 1 ounce, 30 milliliters, fresh lemon juice. 4. Half an ounce, 15 milliliters, simple syrup, adjust to taste. 5. 4 5 fresh basil leaves. 6. Ice cubes. 7. Lemon twist or basil sprig for garnish. For simple syrup. 1. 1 half cup water. 2. 1 half cup granulated sugar. Instructions. 1. Prepare simple syrup. 1. In a small saucepan, combine water and sugar. 1. Heat over medium heat, stirring until the sugar dissolves. 2. Allow the simple syrup to cool before using. 2. You can store any extra in the refrigerator for future use. 2. Muddle basil. 1. In a shaker, muddle the fresh basil leaves to release their flavor. 1. If you don't have a muddler, you can gently press the basil leaves with the back of a spoon. 3. Add ingredients to shaker. 1. Add vodka triple sec, fresh lemon juice, and simple syrup to the shaker. 4. Shake. 1. Fill the shaker with ice cubes and shake the mixture vigorously for about 10-15 seconds. 1. This chills the ingredients and infuses the flavors. 5. Strain and pour. 1. Strain the cocktail into a chilled martini glass, removing the ice and basil leaves. 6. Garnish. 1. Garnish the basil lemon drop martini with a lemon twist or a fresh basil sprig. 7. Enjoy. 1. Sip and savor this delightful cocktail. 1. The combination of basil, lemon, and the crispness of the vodka makes for a light and refreshing drink. Feel free to adjust the sweetness by adding more or less simple syrup based on your preference. Cheers to a delicious lunch or after-dinner cocktail experience. Ever wondered what's a quick and delicious lunch option for your busy day? How about a versatile, customizable, and oh-so-delicious veggie wrap? First, gather your ingredients. You'll need whole-grain tortilla wraps, hummus, or your favorite spread. A rainbow of sliced vegetables, perhaps some cheese, and maybe even a protein like chicken or tofu. Don't forget fresh herbs for a burst of flavor. Begin by laying your tortilla wrap flat on a clean surface or plate. Paint the canvas of your wrap with a layer of hummus or your preferred spread, but remember to leave some space around the edges for folding later. Now it's time to get creative. Arrange your choice of sliced vegetables, cheese and protein in the center of the tortilla. There's no wrong way to do this, it's your masterpiece after all. Next, sprinkle some fresh herbs over your chosen fillings. Imagine you're a chef in a fancy restaurant, adding that final touch to make the dish truly sing. Now, fold the sides of the tortilla toward the center, gently covering your colorful array of fillings. Starting from the bottom, roll the tortilla tightly until you have a secure wrap, a neat little package of deliciousness. 
If you like, you can slice the wrap in half diagonally for easier handling or simply to admire your handiwork. And there you have it, a simple, tasty and customizable veggie wrap, ready in minutes. Perfect for those busy days when you need a quick nourishing meal that doesn't skimp on flavor. This recipe is not only versatile but also packed with nutrients from the fresh veggies and whole grains. So the next time you're wondering what to make for lunch, give this veggie wrap a whirl. It's a wrap. Creating the universally beloved chicken recipe that would appeal to every country's diverse tastes is quite a challenge, as food preferences vary widely across cultures. However, a dish like chicken tikka masala often receives worldwide acclaim and has gained popularity globally due to its delicious flavors and adaptability. Here's a basic recipe for chicken tikka masala, a dish that originated in the Indian subcontinent but has become beloved worldwide. Ingredients For the marinade 1. 1. 1.5 pounds boneless, skinless chicken breasts or thighs, cut into bite-sized pieces. 2. 1 cup plain yogurt 3. 2 tablespoons lemon juice 4. 2 teaspoons ground cumin 5. 2 teaspoons ground coriander 6. 1 teaspoon paprika 7. 1 teaspoon turmeric 8. 1 teaspoon garam masala 9. 1 teaspoon chili powder, adjust to taste 10. 2 teaspoons minced garlic 11. 1 tablespoon grated ginger 12. Salt to taste For the sauce 1. 2 tablespoons oil or ghee 2. 1 large onion, finely chopped 3. 2 to 3 tomatoes, finely chopped or 1 can, 14 ounces, diced tomatoes 4. 1 tablespoon tomato paste 5. 1 teaspoon ground cumin 6. 1 teaspoon ground coriander 7. 1 teaspoon paprika 8. 1 teaspoon garam masala 9. 1 cup heavy cream or coconut milk 10. Salt to taste 11. Chopped fresh cilantro for garnish, optional Instructions in a bowl, combine all the marinade ingredients. Add the chicken pieces and coat them thoroughly with the marinade. Cover and refrigerate for at least one hour, or ideally, overnight. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius. Thread the marinated chicken onto skewers and place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Bake for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. While the chicken is baking, prepare the sauce. Heat oil or ghee in a large pan over medium heat. Add the chopped onion and saute until translucent. Add the chopped tomatoes, tomato paste, ground cumin, ground coriander, paprika, garam masala, and salt. Cook the mixture until the tomatoes break down and the sauce thickens. Once the chicken is cooked, remove it from the oven and add it to the sauce. Stir in the heavy cream or coconut milk. Simmer the mixture for a few minutes until the flavors melt together. Adjust seasoning if needed. Garnish with chopped cilantro if desired. This chicken tikka masala is a flavorful and creamy dish that can be served with rice, naan bread, or alongside other accompaniments based on preferences. It's known for its rich and aromatic flavors and has become a favorite in many parts of the world. You'll be amazed to see how easy this recipe is to prepare. Here's a delicious one pan orecchiette pasta recipe that's easy to make and requires minimal cleanup. Ingredients 12 ounces, 340 grams, orecchiette pasta. 4 cups chicken or vegetable broth, plus more if needed. 1 can, 14 ounces, 400 grams, diced tomatoes, or 2 cups fresh diced tomatoes. 3 cloves, garlic, minced. 1 onion, finely chopped. 1 teaspoon dried oregano. 1 teaspoon dried basil. 1 half teaspoon red pepper flakes, adjust to taste. Salt and pepper to taste. 2 tablespoons olive oil. 2 cups fresh spinach leaves, optional. Grated parmesan cheese for serving. Fresh basil leaves for garnish, optional. Instructions. In a large, deep skillet or pot, 
Combine the dry orecciette pasta, chicken or vegetable broth, diced tomatoes, with their juices, minced garlic, chopped onion, dried oregano, dried basil, red pepper flakes, salt, and pepper. Make sure the pasta is mostly submerged in the liquid. Place the skillet over medium-high heat and bring the mixture to a boil, stirring occasionally. Once it reaches a boil, reduce the heat to medium-low and let the pasta simmer uncovered, stirring occasionally to prevent sticking. Cook for about 10-12 minutes or until the pasta is al dente and most of the liquid has been absorbed. If the pasta appears dry before it's fully cooked, add a little more broth or water. As the pasta finishes cooking, stir in the fresh spinach leaves if using. Let them wilt into the pasta for a minute or two. Once the pasta is cooked to your liking and the liquid is mostly absorbed, remove the skillet from heat. Drizzle olive oil over the pasta and toss everything together to coat. Serve the one pan orecciette pasta immediately, garnished with grated parmesan cheese and fresh basil leaves if desired. This one pan orecciette pasta is a convenient and flavorful dish where the pasta cooks in the broth, absorbing all the delicious flavors from the tomatoes, herbs, and aromatics. It's a quick and satisfying meal perfect for a busy day without compromising on taste. Adjust the seasoning and spice level according to your preferences. Enjoy! Here's a quick and easy Asian-inspired stir-fry recipe that you can whip up for a flavorful lunch. Asian Chicken and Vegetable Stir-Fry Ingredients 2 boneless, skinless chicken breasts, thinly sliced. 2 cups mixed vegetables, bell peppers, broccoli, snap peas, carrots, mushrooms, etc., sliced or chopped. 3 cloves garlic, minced. 1 inch piece of ginger, grated or minced. 2 tablespoons soy sauce. 1 tablespoon oyster sauce, optional. 1 tablespoon sesame oil. 2 tablespoons vegetable oil or peanut oil. Cooked rice or noodles for serving. Optional garnishes, sesame seeds, sliced green onions. Instructions. Heat a wok or a large skillet over medium-high heat. Add vegetable oil to the pan. Add the sliced chicken to the hot pan and stir-fry for 3-4 minutes until it's no longer pink. Remove the cooked chicken from the pan and set it aside. In the same pan, add a bit more oil if needed. Stir-fry the minced garlic and ginger for about 30 seconds until fragrant. Add the mixed vegetables to the pan and stir-fry for 3-4 minutes until they're slightly tender but still crisp. Return the cooked chicken to the pan with the vegetables. Drizzle soy sauce, oyster sauce, if using, and sesame oil over the chicken and vegetables. Toss everything together to coat evenly. Stir fry for an additional minute to combine flavors and ensure everything is heated through. Once done, remove from heat. Serve the stir fry over cooked rice or noodles. Optionally, garnish with sesame seeds and sliced green onions for added flavor and presentation. This quick and delicious chicken and vegetable stir-fry offers a burst of Asian flavors and can be customized with your favorite veggies or protein choices. It's a versatile dish that can be easily adjusted to suit your taste preferences. Crab Cakes Recipe Crab cakes are sweet, salty, savory, crisp, and tender. All those delicious flavors and textures in one bite is perfection. Seasoned with Old Bay and made crispy on the outside with breadcrumbs, these crab cakes are the bomb. Crab cakes are a fantastic dish that brings together the delicate sweetness of crab meat with savory seasonings. Here's a classic recipe to make delicious crab cakes. Ingredients 1 pound lump crab meat, picked over for shells. 1 third cup mayonnaise. 1 large egg, lightly beaten. 1 tablespoon Dijon mustard. 1 tablespoon Worcestershire sauce. 1 teaspoon Old Bay seasoning, plus extra for seasoning. 1 half teaspoon garlic powder. 1 quarter cup finely chopped green onions or chives. 1 half cup breadcrumbs, plus extra for coating. 2 tablespoons unsalted butter. 2 tablespoons olive oil. Lemon wedges for serving. Optional, tartar sauce or aioli for dipping. Instructions. In a large mixing bowl, gently combine the lump crab meat with mayonnaise, beaten egg, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, Old Bay seasoning, garlic powder, chopped green onions or chives, and breadcrumbs. Be careful not to break up the crab meat too much. You want to maintain some lumpiness for texture. 
divide the crab mixture into equal portions and shape them into patties of your desired size. Place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and refrigerate for about 30 minutes. This helps the crab cakes firm up before cooking. In a shallow dish, spread out some additional breadcrumbs. Gently coat both sides of each chilled crab cake with the breadcrumbs, pressing them lightly onto the surface to adhere. Heat butter and olive oil in a skillet over medium heat. Carefully place the crab cakes in the skillet and cook for about 4-5 minutes on each side, or until they are golden brown and heated through. Be gentle when flipping the crab cakes to prevent them from falling apart. Once cooked, transfer the crab cakes to a paper towel lined plate to absorb any excess oil. Serve the crab cakes hot, garnished with a sprinkle of Old Bay seasoning and accompanied by lemon wedges for squeezing. Optionally, serve with tartar sauce or aioli for dipping. These crab cakes are bursting with flavor and make for a delightful appetizer or main course. Enjoy their crispy exterior and tender, savory interior. Perfect for a seafood lover's delight. Name lobster rolls. What do you get when you put sweet lobster meat with mayo in a hot dog bun? A masterpiece, that's what. Name lobster rolls are unbelievably sumptuous, and they deserve a standing ovation. Buttered and dressed with mayo or a splash of lemon juice, lobster rolls are a seafood lover's dream come true. While Maine undoubtedly offers the best tasting lobster rolls, you can also whip up your own at home with this simple recipe. Maine lobster rolls are a classic and beloved seafood dish that highlights the delicious taste of fresh lobster in a simple yet delightful way. Here's a straightforward recipe for making Maine style lobster rolls at home. Ingredients 1 and a half pounds cooked lobster meat, freshly cooked or frozen, thawed. 1 quarter cup mayonnaise 2 to 3 tablespoons unsalted butter, melted Salt and pepper to taste Chopped fresh chives or parsley for garnish, optional 4 split top hot dog buns or New England style rolls Instructions If using whole lobsters, cook them in boiling salted water for about 8 to 10 minutes until the shells turn bright red Once cooked Remove the lobster meat from the shells, chop it into bite-sized pieces, and set aside. If using frozen lobster meat, thaw it according to package instructions. In a mixing bowl, combine the chopped lobster meat with mayonnaise. Gently fold the lobster and mayo together until the lobster is evenly coated. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Heat a skillet or griddle over medium heat. Brush the insides of the split top hot dog buns or New England style rolls with melted butter. Toast the buttered buns on the skillet or griddle until they become golden and crispy on the edges. Remove from heat. Fill each toasted bun with the prepared lobster salad mixture, dividing it equally among the rolls. If desired, sprinkle chopped fresh chives or parsley over the lobster filling for added flavor and presentation. Serve the main lobster rolls immediately while they're still warm. These lobster rolls are a wonderful way to savor the sweet and succulent taste of lobster. They're perfect for a summer meal, a special occasion, or any time you're craving a taste of the main coast. Adjust the seasoning and mayo quantity according to your preference, and enjoy this delightful East Coast treat right at home. Feijoada is a classic and flavorful Brazilian stew that's perfect for a hearty meal. Here's a traditional recipe for feijoada. Ingredients. For the feijoada. 1. 1 pound, 450 grams, dried black beans. 2. 1 pound, 450 grams, assorted pork and beef cuts, such as pork shoulder, bacon, ribs, sausage. 3. 1 onion, chopped. 4. 4 cloves garlic, minced. 5. 2 bay leaves. 6. Water, as needed. 7. Salt and pepper, to taste. For serving. 1. Cooked white rice. 2. Collard greens, cleaned and sliced thinly. 3. Orange slices. Instructions. Rinse the black beans thoroughly and soak them in water overnight or for at least 8 hours. Drain and set aside. 
In a large pot or Dutch oven, place the soaked beans along with the assorted pork and beef cuts, chopped onion, minced garlic, bay leaves, and enough water to cover the ingredients. Bring the pot to a boil over high heat, then reduce the heat to low and simmer, partially covered, for about 2-3 to three hours or until the beans and meat are tender. Skim off any foam that rises to the surface during cooking. As the feijoada simmers, check the tenderness of the beans and meats occasionally, adding more water if needed to keep them covered. Once the beans and meats are tender and the stew has thickened, season with salt and pepper to taste. Remove the bay leaves. While the feijoada is cooking, prepare the rice according to package instructions. For the collard greens, heat a little oil in a separate pan. Sauté the thinly sliced collard greens with garlic until they're tender but still vibrant green. Serve the feijoada in bowls alongside the cooked white rice, sautéed collard greens, and orange slices. Traditionally, feijoada is served family style, with the stew, rice, collard greens, and orange slices arranged on the table so everyone can help themselves to their desired portions. It's a delicious and comforting dish that represents the heart of Brazilian cuisine, perfect for gatherings and celebrations. Deviled eggs are a classic and popular appetizer. Here's a straightforward recipe to make delicious deviled eggs. Ingredients 6 large eggs 1 quarter cup mayonnaise 1 teaspoon Dijon mustard Half teaspoon white vinegar or lemon juice Salt and pepper to taste Paprika, fresh herbs, chives, or bacon bits for garnish, optional Instructions Boil the eggs, place the eggs in a saucepan and cover them with water Bring the water to a boil then reduce the heat to a gentle simmer. Cook the eggs for about 10 to 12 minutes. Cool and peel. Once cooked, transfer the eggs to a bowl of ice water to cool them down quickly. Gently crack the eggshells and peel them under running water for easier peeling. Slice and prepare. Carefully cut the peeled eggs in half lengthwise. Remove the yolks and place them in a separate bowl. Arrange the egg white halves on a serving plate. Make the filling, mash the egg yolks using a fork until they are crumbly. Add mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, white vinegar or lemon juice, salt, and pepper to the mashed yolks. Mix everything together until smooth and creamy. Adjust the seasonings to your taste. Fill the eggs, spoon or pipe the yolk mixture evenly into the hollows of the egg white halves. You can use a piping bag or simply a spoon to fill them. Garnish, sprinkle paprika, chop fresh herbs, chives, bacon bits, or any preferred toppings on top of the deviled eggs for added flavor and presentation. Chill and serve refrigerate the deviled eggs for at least 30 minutes before serving, to allow the flavors to meld together. Serve chilled. Deviled eggs are versatile, and you can adjust the ingredients to suit your taste preferences. They make a great addition to any appetizer spread or party platter, and their deliciously creamy filling with various flavor options ensures they're always a hit among guests. Ever pondered the art of creating fabulous donuts and cupcakes from the comfort of your kitchen? Imagine the smell of freshly baked goods wafting through your home. The sweet satisfaction of biting into a moist cupcake or a fluffy donut you've crafted with your own two hands. Well, it's not as daunting as you might think, and today we're going to explore just how simple it can be. Begin with the basics. Gather the ingredients for your cupcakes. Flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, butter, milk, eggs, and of course the essence of your choice. Vanilla, chocolate, the world of flavors is at your command. Start the process by preheating your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. While waiting, mix together the dry ingredients. A flurry of flour, a sprinkle of sugar, a dash of baking powder and a pinch of salt. Then, in a separate bowl, cream together the butter and sugar until it achieves a light and fluffy consistency. Pour in the eggs, one at a time, followed by the essence of your choice. And finally, alternate between adding the dry ingredients and milk beginning and ending with the dry ingredients. Spoon the batter into cupcake liners, filling them two-thirds full, and bake for about 20 minutes, or until a toothpick inserted into the middle of a cupcake comes out clean. 
allow them to cool and voila, you have your cupcakes. Now onto the donuts. The ingredients are similar to the cupcakes with the addition of yeast. Begin by activating the yeast in warm milk. In another bowl, mix together your dry ingredients, flour, sugar and salt. Into this, add your activated yeast, melted butter and eggs. Combine these together to form a dough. Knead the dough until it's smooth and elastic, then let it rise in a warm place until doubled in size. Once risen, roll out the dough and cut out your doughnut shapes. Fry them in hot oil until golden brown, then drain on a paper towel. Once cooled, dip them in a glaze of your choice or dust them with powdered sugar. And there you have it, a simple step-by-step -step guide to creating fabulous doughnuts and cupcakes at home. It's not just about the end result, but also the joy of creating something with your own hands. The satisfaction of seeing your efforts turn into a delicious treat. So, why not give it a try? You might just surprise yourself with your baking prowess. After all, the secret ingredient to any recipe is love. And that's something we can all whip up in our kitchens. Remember, the only way to get better at baking is to keep doing it. So, keep experimenting, keep tasting, and most importantly, keep enjoying the process. Happy baking! First off, we have a classic, baked brie with cranberry and rosemary. This dish is as simple as it is divine. Begin by preheating your oven to 350 degree F or 175 degree C. Set your wheel of brie on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Cover the wheel with cranberry sauce or whole cranberries and sprinkle with fresh chopped rosemary. Bake for 12 to 15 minutes until the cheese is melted and bubbly. Serve with a sliced baguette or crackers for a delightful start to your party. Next, we have a party staple, spinach and artichoke dip. Begin by preheating your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. In a mixing bowl, combine frozen spinach, chopped artichoke hearts, softened cream cheese, sour cream, mayonnaise, shredded mozzarella cheese, grated Parmesan cheese, minced garlic, and salt and pepper to taste. Once mixed, transfer the mixture to a baking dish. Bake for 25 to 30 minutes or until the top is bubbly and golden. Serve with tortilla chips, bread or crackers for a tasty and creamy treat. Our third recipe is crispy Parmesan cauliflower bites. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Cut a head of cauliflower into florets and dip into flour, beaten eggs, and a mixture of breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, garlic powder, paprika, salt, and pepper. Arrange the coated cauliflower on your baking sheet and bake for 20 to 25 minutes until golden and crispy. Serve with marinara sauce for a flavorful and crunchy appetizer. Fourth on our list are mini Capri's skewers. Assemble cherry tomatoes, fresh mozzarella balls, and fresh basil leaves on toothpicks or mini skewers. Arrange them on a serving platter and drizzle with balsamic glaze just before serving. This is a fresh, light, and easy-to-make appetizer that your guests will love. Lastly, we have bacon-wrapped dates with goat cheese. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. Stuff each pitted medjool date with a small amount of goat cheese, then wrap each one with a third of a slice of bacon, securing it with a toothpick. Place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and bake for 15 to 20 minutes until the bacon is crispy. Serve warm for a sweet and savory treat that will leave your guests wanting more. These appetizers offer a range of flavors and textures, perfect for impressing guests at your next party or gathering. Enjoy the process of creation and even more so, the delight of sharing these wonderful bites. Here's a delicious recipe for pork medallions with balsamic vinegar and capers. Ingredients 4 pork tenderloin medallions, about 1 inch thick. Salt and pepper to taste. 2 tablespoons olive oil 2 cloves garlic, minced 1 quarter cup balsamic vinegar 2 tablespoons capers, drained 1 quarter cup chicken or vegetable broth 2 tablespoons butter Fresh parsley, chopped for garnish Instructions Season the pork medallions generously with salt and pepper on both sides Heat olive oil in a skillet over medium-high heat. Once hot, add the pork medallions to the skillet. Cook the pork for about 4 to 5 minutes on each side or until they reach an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, 63 degrees Celsius. Cooking time may vary based on the thickness of the medallions. 
Remove the cooked pork from the skillet and transfer it to a plate. Cover loosely with foil to keep warm. In the same skillet, add minced garlic and sauté for about 30 seconds until fragrant. Pour in the balsamic vinegar and stir, scraping up any brown bits from the bottom of the skillet. Add the capers and chicken or vegetable broth to the skillet. Allow the mixture to simmer for a few minutes until it reduces slightly. Stir in the butter and continue cooking until the sauce thickens enough to coat the back of a spoon. Return the pork medallions and any juices accumulated on the plate back to the skillet. Coat the pork with the balsamic caper sauce. Cook for an additional minute or two, turning the pork to coat evenly with the sauce. Once done, remove the skillet from heat. Plate the pork medallions with balsamic vinegar and capers, spooning the sauce over the top. Garnish with chopped fresh parsley. This dish offers a delightful balance of flavors with the tanginess of balsamic vinegar and the briny essence of capers complementing the tender and juicy pork medallions. Serve it with your favorite sides like roasted vegetables, mashed potatoes, or a fresh salad for a satisfying meal. This recipe is really amazing. Here's a recipe for a delicious barbecue chicken chopped salad. Ingredients For the barbecue chicken 1. 2 boneless, skinless chicken breasts 2. Salt and pepper to taste 3. 1 cup barbecue sauce, your favorite variety 4. Olive oil for cooking For the salad 1. 6 cups chopped romaine lettuce or mixed greens. 2. 1 cup corn kernels, fresh, canned, or thawed frozen. 3. 1 cup black beans, drained and rinsed. 4. 1 cup cherry tomatoes, halved. 5. Half red onion, thinly sliced. 6. 1 avocado, diced. 7. 1 quarter cup chopped cilantro, optional. 8. Half cup shredded cheddar cheese or Monterey Jack cheese. 9. Tortilla strips or crushed tortilla chips for garnish, optional. For the dressing. 1. 1 quarter cup barbecue sauce. 2. 2 tablespoons olive oil. 3. 2 tablespoons lime juice. 4. 1 tablespoon honey or maple syrup 5. 1 teaspoon Dijon mustard 6. Salt and pepper to taste Instructions Prepare the barbecue chicken 1. Season the chicken breasts with salt and pepper on both sides 2. Heat a grill pan or skillet over medium-high heat and drizzle with olive oil 3. Cook the chicken breasts for about 5 to 6 minutes on each side, or until they reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius. 4. Brush both sides of the chicken with barbecue sauce during the last few minutes of cooking, allowing it to agar. 4. Remove from heat and let it rest for a few minutes. 4. Then, slice or chop the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Prepare the salad. 1. In a large salad bowl, combine the chopped lettuce or mixed greens with corn, black beans, cherry tomatoes, sliced red onion, diced avocado, chopped cilantro, if using, and shredded cheese. Make the dressing. 1. In a small bowl, whisk together the barbecue sauce, olive oil, lime juice, honey or maple syrup, Dijon mustard, salt, and pepper until well combined. Assemble the salad. 1. Add the sliced barbecue chicken to the salad bowl. 2. Drizzle the barbecue dressing over the salad ingredients. Toss the salad gently to coat everything evenly with the dressing. Serve the barbecue chicken chopped salad in individual bowls or plates, and if desired, Garnish with tortilla strips, or crushed tortilla chips for added crunch and texture. 
This barbecue chicken chopped salad is a flavorful and satisfying dish, combining the smoky taste of barbecue chicken with fresh, crisp vegetables and a tangy dressing. It's perfect for a light lunch or a refreshing dinner option on warmer days. Here's a classic banana pudding recipe that embodies the flavors and indulgence of this beloved southern dessert. Ingredients 3 quarters cup granulated sugar 1 quarter cup all-purpose flour 1 quarter teaspoon salt 3 cups whole milk 4 large egg yolks 2 teaspoons pure vanilla extract 3-4 ripe bananas, sliced 1 box Nilla wafers, about 11 ounces Whipped cream or meringue for topping, optional. Instructions. In a medium saucepan, whisk together the sugar, flour, and salt. In a separate bowl, whisk together the whole milk and egg yolks until well combined. Gradually pour the milk and egg mixture into the saucepan with the dry ingredients, whisking continuously to avoid lumps. Place the saucepan over medium heat. Cook the mixture, stirring constantly, until it thickens and reaches a pudding-like consistency. This typically takes about 8-10 minutes. Once thickened, remove the pudding from heat and stir in the vanilla extract. Let it cool for a few minutes. In a serving dish or trifle bowl, start assembling the banana pudding layers. Begin with a layer of Nilla wafers at the bottom, followed by a layer of sliced bananas. Pour a portion of the warm pudding over the banana layer, covering it completely. Repeat the layering process, creating alternating layers of Nilla wafers, sliced bananas, and pudding until the ingredients are used up. Ensure the top layer is pudding. Cover the assembled banana pudding and refrigerate for at least 4 hours or overnight to allow the flavors to meld and the wafers to soften. Before serving, you can optionally top the chilled banana pudding with a layer of whipped cream or meringue for added decadence and flavor. This classic banana pudding recipe captures the essence of southern comfort desserts and is perfect for gatherings or just indulging in a delightful treat with its creamy texture and layers of sweet bananas, pudding, and nilla wafers. Here's a simple and delicious recipe featuring strawberries. Strawberry Shortcake Ingredients For the shortcake 1. 2 cups all-purpose flour 2. 1 quarter cup granulated sugar 3. 1 tablespoon baking powder 4. 1 half teaspoon salt 5. 1 half cup cold unsalted butter, cut into small pieces 6. 3 quarters cup milk 7. 1 teaspoon vanilla extract For the strawberries 1. 1 pound fresh strawberries, hold and sliced 2. 2 3 tablespoons granulated sugar, adjust to taste 3. Optional, a splash of lemon juice For the whipped cream 1. 1 cup heavy whipping cream 2. 2 tablespoons powdered sugar 3. 1 teaspoon vanilla extract. Instructions. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 220 degrees Celsius. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Prepare the shortcake. 1. In a large mixing bowl, combine the flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt. 1. Cut in the cold butter using a pastry cutter or fork until the mixture resembles coarse crumbs. 2. Stir in the milk and vanilla extract until just combined. 2. Do not overmix. 3. Drop the dough in large spoonfuls onto the prepared baking sheet, creating 6-8 evenly sized shortcakes. 4. Bake for 12-15 minutes or until golden brown. 4. Remove from the oven and let them cool on a wire rack. Prepare the strawberries. 1. In a bowl, combine the sliced strawberries with granulated sugar, to taste, and a splash of lemon juice if desired. 1. Toss gently to coat the strawberries and let them macerate for about 15-20 minutes to release their juices. Make the whipped cream. 1. In a chilled mixing bowl, whip the heavy cream using a hand mixer or stand mixer until it begins to thicken. 2. Add powdered sugar and vanilla extract. 2. Continue whipping until soft peaks form. Assemble the strawberry shortcakes. 1. Slice the cooled shortcakes in half horizontally. 2. Place a generous spoonful of macerated strawberries on the bottom half of each shortcake. 3. Top with a dollop of freshly whipped cream. 4. Place the other half of the shortcake on top and add more strawberries and cream if desired. Serve immediately and enjoy this classic dessert with fresh, juicy strawberries. This strawberry shortcake recipe is a delightful way to enjoy the sweetness of ripe strawberries paired with tender shortcake and fluffy whipped cream, a perfect treat for any time of the year, especially when strawberries are in season. Here's a delightful recipe for brandy jam loaf cake. Brandy jam loaf cake. Ingredients. For the cake. 1. 1 cup unsalted butter, softened. 
2. 1 cup granulated sugar. 3. 4 large eggs. 4. 2 cups all-purpose flour. 5. 1 and a half teaspoons baking powder. 6. 1 quarter teaspoon salt. 7. 1 half cup brandy. 8. 1 teaspoon vanilla extract. 9. 1 half cup whole milk. For the jam filling. 1. 1 half cup your favorite fruit jam, apricot, raspberry, or strawberry work well. For the brandy glaze. 1. 1 half cup powdered sugar. 2. 2 tablespoons brandy. Instructions. 1. Preheat the oven. 1. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 degrees Celsius. 2. Grease and flour a loaf pan. 2. Make the cake batter. 1. In a large bowl, cream together softened butter and granulated sugar until light and fluffy. 2. Add eggs one at a time, beating well after each addition. 3. In a separate bowl, whisk together flour, baking powder, and salt. 4. In another bowl, mix brandy and vanilla extract. 5. Gradually add the dry ingredients to the butter mixture, alternating with the brandy mixture, beginning and ending with the dry ingredients. 6. Mix in the milk until the batter is smooth. 3. Assemble the loaf cake. 1. Pour half of the batter into the prepared loaf pan. 2. Spoon the fruit jam evenly over the batter. 3. Pour the remaining batter over the jam, spreading it to cover. 4. Bake the cake. 1. Bake in the preheated oven for 50-60 minutes or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. 2. Allow the cake to cool in the pan for 10 minutes, then transfer it to a wire rack to cool completely. 5. Prepare the brandy glaze. 1. In a small bowl, whisk together powdered sugar and brandy until smooth. 6. Glaze the cake. 1. Once the cake has cooled, drizzle the brandy glaze over the top. 2. Allow the glaze to set before slicing and serving. 7. Serve and enjoy. 1. Slice the brandy jam loaf cake and savor the rich flavors of brandy and fruit jam. This brandy jam loaf cake is a perfect treat for any occasion, and the combination of brandy and jam adds a delightful twist to a classic loaf cake. Enjoy! Imagine a bustling street, where the air hums with the sizzle of woks, the chop of blades against wooden boards, and the enticing aroma of spices wafting through the air. This is the incredible world of Asian street food, a culinary adventure that takes you from the sizzling stalls of Bangkok to the bustling markets of Beijing. Begin this gastronomic journey in Thailand, home to the world-renowned dish, Pad Thai. Originating from the time of World War II as a result of rice shortage, Pad Thai became a symbol of Thai culinary ingenuity. A melange of rice noodles stir-fried with tofu, shrimp or chicken, combined with a burst of flavors from tamarind pulp, fish sauce, garlic and chili, and garnished with crushed peanuts and lime wedges, makes Pad Thai a must-try for any food lover. Venture next to the streets of Vietnam, where the iconic pho reigns supreme. Born in the early 20th century in northern Vietnam, pho is a fragrant noodle soup that encapsulates the essence of Vietnamese cuisine. Slivers of beef or chicken are simmered in a rich broth, carefully seasoned with star anise, ginger and cinnamon. Served over rice noodles and garnished with fresh herbs, pho is a symphony of flavors that is as nourishing as it is delicious. From the soupy delights of Vietnam, travel to the vibrant lanes of India, where the popular street food chart rules the roost. A category of snacks originated in the northern parts of India, chaat is known for its tangy and spicy explosion of flavors. A typical chaat like Pani Puri involves hollow crispy puris, filled with a mixture of flavored water, tamarind chutney, chili, chaat masala, potato, onion and chickpeas. Each bite of this delightful snack is a carnival of tastes, textures and temperatures. Now, let's head east to Japan for a taste of takoyaki, a popular snack that originated in Osaka. Takoyaki, or octopus balls, are round, bite-sized dumplings filled with minced or diced octopus, tempura scraps, pickled ginger, and green onion. Cooked in a special molded pan, these dumplings are typically served with a drizzle of takoyaki sauce and mayonnaise, and a sprinkle of green laver and shavings of dried bonito. Crispy on the outside, gooey on the inside, Takoyaki is a snack that truly embodies the spirit of Japanese street food. In summary, 
Asian street food is a testament to the vast culinary diversity and the rich cultural history of the region. From the tangy and spicy chart of India, to the comforting pho of Vietnam, the delicious pad thai of Thailand, and the unique takoyaki of Japan, each dish tells a story of its origin, ingredients, and preparation methods. These dishes not only satiate hunger, but also offer a window into the culture, traditions, and history of their respective countries. So, the next time you find yourself in the streets of Asia, don't hesitate to embark on this culinary adventure. Imagine this. Succulent shrimp, tender and juicy, bathed in a rich sauce that's a symphony of garlicky, buttery and subtly tart flavors. A sprinkle of fresh parsley adds an earthy note, and a hint of heat from red pepper flakes teases the palate. This is shrimp scampi, a dish that's as elegant as it is easy to prepare. To start, thaw a pound of large shrimp if frozen, rinse them under cold water and pat dry, remove the shells and devein each little crustacean. Now it's time to saute. Heat olive oil and a dollop of butter in a large skillet over medium-high heat. Add the shrimp, arranging them in a single layer. Cook them until they turn a rosy pink, about 1 to 2 minutes per side, then remove and set aside. Next, the scampi sauce takes center stage. In the same skillet, saute minced garlic and optional red pepper flakes until the air fills with a heady aroma. Pour in a quarter cup of dry white wine and the juice of one lemon. Let it simmer, reducing slightly as the flavors meld beautifully. Stir in more butter, watching as it melts into the sauce, thickening it just so. Season to taste with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Now, reunite the shrimp with the sauce, allowing them to heat through in their flavorful bath. Sprinkle over chopped fresh parsley, lending a vibrant counterpoint to the rich sauce. For those who desire a heartier meal, serve the shrimp scampi over cooked pasta, such as linguine or spaghetti. Alternatively, a crusty loaf of bread makes the perfect vehicle to sop up any remaining sauce. Enjoy the shrimp scampi hot, savoring each bite of this savory, flavorful dish. Whether for a weeknight dinner or a special occasion, this quick and easy recipe is sure to impress. The result? A meal that's not just cooked but crafted, with layers of flavors that blend harmoniously, leaving a lasting impression on the palate. Here's a quick and easy dinner recipe for creamy garlic parmesan pasta. It's a delicious and comforting dish that can be prepared in about 20 to 30 minutes. Ingredients 1. 8 ounces, about 2 cups, of your favorite pasta, for example, fettuccine, spaghetti, or penne. 2. 2 tablespoons butter. 3. 4 cloves garlic, minced. 4. 1 cup heavy cream 5. Half cup grated parmesan cheese 6. Salt and freshly ground black pepper, to taste 7. Fresh parsley, chopped, for garnish, optional Instructions Cook the pasta 1. In a large pot, bring salted water to a boil 1. Cook the pasta according to the package instructions until it's al dente. 1. Drain and set aside. Prepare the sauce. In a large skillet or pan, melt the butter over medium heat. Add the minced garlic and sauté for about a minute, or until it becomes fragrant. Be careful not to brown the garlic. Pour in the heavy cream and bring it to a gentle simmer. Let it simmer for about 2 to 3 minutes, allowing it to thicken slightly. Add the parmesan. 1. Stir in the grated parmesan cheese into the cream sauce. 1. Continue to stir until the cheese is completely melted and the sauce is smooth. 1. Season with salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. 1. Adjust the seasonings as needed. Combine with pasta. 1. Add the cooked and drained pasta to the creamy garlic parmesan sauce. 1. Toss the pasta until it's well coated with the sauce and heated through. Serve. 1. Serve the creamy garlic parmesan pasta hot, garnished with chopped fresh parsley if desired. This quick and easy dinner recipe provides a rich and flavorful pasta dish that the whole family can enjoy. It's perfect for busy weeknights or when you want a satisfying meal without spending too much time in the kitchen.
Picture this, Paris, late 18th century. The city is abuzz with the latest culinary invention, a crescent-shaped pastry as flaky as the morning frost and as buttery as a summer sunrise. This, my friends, is the birth of the croissant, a pastry so popular it's become synonymous with French culture and breakfast tables worldwide. Making a croissant is an art, a testament to the baker's patience and skill. It's not merely a recipe, it's a dance of ingredients, a ballet of butter and flour. So how does one create this masterpiece? First, gather the ingredients. You'll need strong bread flour, milk, sugar, salt, yeast, butter, and a touch of determination. The magic of a croissant lies in its simplicity. It's a testament to how something ordinary can become extraordinary through technique and time. Now let's begin. Start by combining the flour, sugar, salt, and yeast in a large mixing bowl. Mix them together until well combined. Next, add the milk and butter to the dry ingredients. Mix everything together until a dough forms. Once the dough has come together, transfer it to a lightly floured surface. Knead the dough for about 10 minutes or until it becomes smooth and elastic. After kneading, shape the dough into a ball and place it in a greased bowl. Cover the bowl with a clean kitchen towel and let the dough rise for about 1 to 2 hours, or until it has doubled in size. Once the dough has risen, punch it down to release any air bubbles. Transfer the dough to a lightly floured surface and roll it out into a large rectangle. Now, it's time to incorporate the butter. Place the butter between two sheets of parchment paper and use a rolling pin to flatten it into a thin, even layer. Carefully place the butter on one half of the dough rectangle. Fold the other half of the dough over the butter, creating a butter-filled envelope. Using a rolling pin, gently roll the dough out into a long rectangle, about 1-4 inch thick. Be careful not to press too hard and squeeze out the butter. Once the dough is rolled out, fold it into thirds like a letter. This is called a turn. Repeat this process two more times, chilling the dough in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes between each turn. After the final turn, wrap the dough in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for at least four hours, or overnight if possible. This allows the dough to relax and develop its flavor. When you're ready to bake the croissants, preheat your oven to 400 degree F, 200 degree C. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Remove the dough from the refrigerator and roll it out into a large rectangle about 1-4 inch thick. Using a sharp knife or pizza cutter, cut the dough into triangles. Starting from the wide end, roll each triangle up tightly, tucking the pointed end underneath. Place the rolled croissants on the prepared baking sheet, leaving enough space between them for expansion. In a small bowl, beat an egg with a splash of milk. Brush the egg wash over the croissants, giving them a shiny golden finish. Bake the croissants in the preheated oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they are puffed up and golden brown. Remove the croissants from the oven and let them cool on a wire rack for a few minutes. Serve the croissants warm or at room temperature. They are best enjoyed fresh with a cup of coffee or tea. Making croissants may seem intimidating, but with practice and patience, anyone can master this art. So roll up your sleeves, gather your ingredients, and let the magic unfold. Enjoy! The first step is to create the dough. Combine the bread flour, milk, sugar, salt, and yeast, then knead until smooth. Here's a secret. The dough is the canvas, and the butter is the paint. Together, they create a masterpiece. Once the dough is ready, it's time to introduce the butter. But not just any butter. It must be cold, cut into thin slices, and arranged on the dough. This is the first step in a process called laminating, which gives the croissant its signature layers. Next, fold the dough over the butter, sealing it inside like a precious gem. Roll it out, then fold it into thirds. This process, known as a turn, is repeated multiple times creating hundreds of delicate buttery layers. Patience is key here, rushing will only lead to heartbreak. After the final turn, let the dough rest. This is when the magic happens. As the dough relaxes, the yeast gets to work, creating tiny pockets of air between the layers. These pockets will become the flaky, airy interior of the croissant. Once the dough has had ample time to rest, we can proceed to mold our croissants. Begin by slicing the dough into triangular pieces, followed by rolling them up commencing from the base. This should result in a crescent formation, elegantly referencing its moon-inspired moniker, the croissant. Your task is to end the baking process once the croissants have reached a rich golden hue. The sensory delight of their buttery scent permeating the air is sure to captivate you. This scent is reminiscent of a morning in Paris, a tantalizing hint of the culinary masterpiece that awaits. In summary, making a croissant is a journey, a dance of ingredients and technique. 
It starts with a simple dough, which is then laminated with butter to create hundreds of layers. After a period of rest, the dough is shaped into crescents and baked until golden brown. The result? A pastry that's as rich in history as it is in flavor. So there you have it, the art of the croissant, a dance of butter and flour, patience and time. It's a reminder that sometimes the simplest ingredients can create the most extraordinary results. Let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty of a freshly baked croissant. As the camera pans in for close-up shots of our creations, the golden brown crust glistens under the soft light, the flaky layers promising a delightful crunch with each bite. The buttery aroma, an intoxicating scent that fills the room, is a testament to the satisfaction of seeing the end result of hard work and patience. This, my friends, is the magic of baking, a simple, yet extraordinary act of transforming humble ingredients into a piece of edible art. Looking for a refreshing and healthy snack? Imagine a bite-sized treat that's cool as a cucumber, literally. Today we're diving into a simple yet sophisticated recipe, cucumber bites. First up, gather all the ingredients. These little delights require only a handful of items. Some fresh, crisp cucumbers, your choice of cream cheese or goat cheese, and a selection of garnishes. Our favorites include aromatic herbs, smoked salmon, and sun-dried tomatoes. But don't be afraid to get creative. The world of garnishes is as vast as your imagination. Start by slicing the cucumbers. Aim for about half an inch thickness. Thick enough to provide a crunch, yet thin enough to make for an easy bite. Now, spread a layer of your chosen cheese onto each cucumber slice. The creaminess of the cheese beautifully balances the crispness of the cucumber. Next, it's time for the fun part, garnishing. Sprinkle some finely chopped herbs for a refreshing twist. If you're a fan of seafood, a small piece of smoked salmon on top adds a luxurious touch. For a Mediterranean vibe, try some sun-dried tomatoes. Remember, there are no rules. Mix and match to your heart's desire. And there you have it. Cucumber Bites. A snack that's as fun to make as it is to eat. But these are not just tasty treats. They are also a powerhouse of nutrition. Cucumbers are hydrating and packed with vitamins. The cheese adds a dose of protein, while the garnishes bring their own set of health benefits. Not to mention, these bites are low in calories and carbs, making them a guilt-free indulgence. In a nutshell, cucumber bites are the perfect blend of health and flavor. They're quick to whip up, easy to customize, and sure to impress. Whether you're throwing a party or just want a fancy afternoon snack, these bites are a refreshing change from the usual. So why not give this recipe a shot? Who knows? It might just become your new favorite snack. After all, good things do come in small packages, especially when they're as delicious as these cucumber bites. Ever wondered how to make the perfect vegetable spring rolls at home? Vegetable rolls, a popular dish that has conquered taste buds worldwide, are a harmonious mix of crispy, fresh vegetables wrapped in thin rice paper. As a healthy and adaptable dish, they can be a welcome addition to any menu. Being a quintessential of Asian cuisine, the diversity of vegetable spring rolls mirrors the diversity of the region they come from. They can be found in various forms, each with a unique twist, from the bustling streets of Vietnam to your local sushi bar. However, today, our concentration will be on a straightforward homemade version that can prepare in a jiffy. The true charm of the dish lies in the ingredients, rice paper acting as a blank canvas, and vibrant vegetables such as carrots, cucumbers, and bell peppers that contribute to the color and crunch of the dish. Let's not discount the dipping sauce that unifies all the flavors, adding a kick each bite. Stay tuned as we delve into the step-by-step -step process of making these delightful rolls. First things first, gather up your ingredients. Now let's talk about what we need for our vibrant, crunchy vegetable spring rolls. Start with rice paper, the delicate wrapper that will encase our rainbow of veggies. It's thin, translucent, and becomes pliable when soaked in water, perfect for rolling up our ingredients. Speaking of which, our stars of the show are the fresh veggies, crisp carrots, cool cucumbers, and colorful bell peppers. When it comes to these spring rolls, freshness is key. Using fresh vegetables will give you that satisfying crunch with each bite not to mention the burst of flavors. And let's not forget about the dipping sauce. We'll need a few basic ingredients like soy sauce, sesame oil, and a little sugar. This savory sweet sauce will elevate your spring rolls to another level. With everything ready, we can now start the fun part, the actual making of the spring rolls. Now it's time to get those veggies ready. 
Vegetable spring rolls are all about the fresh crunch, so we have to treat our veggies with respect. Let's start with washing. We want to make sure that every speck of dirt is gone, so give them a good rinse under cool running water. Once they're clean, we're going to peel our carrots and cucumbers. Hold your peeler at a slight angle and apply gentle pressure as you slide it down the length of the vegetable. This will give you thin, even strips, which is exactly what we're aiming for. Next up is our bell peppers. First, cut off the top and bottom, then slice it in half. Remove the seeds and the white membrane and slice it into thin strips. Remember, the thinner the slices, the easier it is to roll our spring rolls later on. Now let's tackle the cucumber. Slice off the ends and cut it in half lengthwise. Use a spoon to scoop out the seeds, which can make our spring rolls soggy. Then, just like our bell peppers, slice it into thin strips. Lastly, the carrots. After peeling, cut them into thin matchsticks. A little tip, keep your fingers tucked in while cutting to avoid any accidents. And there we have it. Our vegetables are washed, peeled, and cut into perfect strips, ready for rolling. With the vegetables all set, we move on to the next step, preparing the rice paper. Rolls. First things first, you'll need to get your hands on some rice paper. This delicate translucent wrap it out while it's still got a bit of firmness to it. Now, oh, a couple of strips of cucumber, a pinch of shredded rice paper at the nine and three o'clock positions. Then, vegetables as you go. The aim here is to roll as tight. Compact roll will ensure that all those fresh flavors stay put. Fresh, vibrant spring rolls, ready for dip ready to be served. No spring roll is complete without a good dipping sauce. Now let's get saucy, shall we? For a simple yet flavorful dipping sauce, all you need are four essential ingredients. Start with two tablespoons of soy sauce, a touch of honey for sweetness, a bit of sesame oil for a rich, nutty flavor, and a sprinkle of chopped spring onions for that extra crunch. Just mix these ingredients together and voila! You've got yourself a classic soy-based dipping sauce. But don't stop there. There's so much room for creativity when it comes to dipping sauces. You can add some heat with a dash of chili flakes or a squeeze of lime juice for a tangy twist. Maybe you're a fan of peanut sauce? Just blend together some peanut butter, a splash of soy sauce, garlic, and a bit of water. Remember, the perfect dipping sauce is one that you love, so feel free to experiment and make it your own. And there you have it, the perfect dipping sauce to accompany your vegetable spring rolls. So there you have it, folks. We've journeyed together through the creation of the perfect vegetable spring rolls. We gathered fresh veggies, prepared them with care, rolled them snugly in rice paper, and whipped up a tantalizing dipping sauce. I encourage you to try this recipe at home and don't hesitate to put your own spin on it. You might just surprise yourself with a new favorite dish. Remember, the perfect vegetable spring roll is just a few simple steps away. Happy cooking! Here's a classic and universally loved dessert recipe for chocolate brownies. These rich, fudgy brownies are sure to satisfy everyone's sweet tooth. Ingredients 1 cup, 2 sticks, unsalted butter 2 cups granulated sugar 4 large eggs 1 teaspoon vanilla extract 1 cup all-purpose flour 2 thirds cup unsweetened cocoa powder 1 half teaspoon baking powder 1 half teaspoon salt 1 cup semi-sweet chocolate chips, optional, for extra chocolatey goodness. Instructions 1. Preheat the oven. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 degrees Celsius. Grease a 9 by 13 inch, 23 by 33 centimeters, 
baking pan and line it with parchment paper, leaving some overhang on the sides for easy brownie removal. 2. Melt the butter. In a microwave-safe bowl or using a saucepan on low heat, melt the butter. Allow it to cool slightly. 3. Mix the wet ingredients. In a large mixing bowl, combine the melted butter and granulated sugar. Stir until well combined. Add the eggs and vanilla extract to the butter and sugar mixture. Mix until smooth. 4. Combine the dry ingredients. In a separate bowl, whisk together the flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, and salt until they are well combined. 5. Combine wet and dry ingredients. Gradually add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, stirring until just combined. Be careful not to overmix the batter. If you want, fold in the semi-sweet chocolate chips for an extra chocolatey kick. 6. Bake the brownies. Pour the brownie batter into the prepared baking pan, spreading it evenly. Bake in the preheated oven for 25-30 minutes, or until a toothpick or cake tester inserted into the center comes out with a few moist crumbs. The exact baking time may vary, so keep an eye on them, as overbaking can make brownies dry. 7. Cool and serve. Allow the brownies to cool in the pan for about 10-15 minutes, and then use the parchment paper overhang to lift them out of the pan. Place them on a wire rack to cool completely. 8. Cut and enjoy. Once the brownies are completely cool, cut them into squares or rectangles. Serve your delicious homemade chocolate brownies and watch everyone enjoy this classic dessert. These chocolate brownies are a crowd pleaser, perfect for any occasion, and can be served with a scoop of ice cream or a drizzle of chocolate sauce for an extra indulgent treat. Here's a recipe for filet mignon with red wine reduction. Ingredients. For the filet mignon. 1. 2 filet mignon steaks, about 1.5 inches thick. 2. Salt and freshly ground black pepper, to taste. 3. 2 tablespoons olive oil. 4. 2 cloves garlic, minced. 5. 2 sprigs of fresh rosemary, or thyme. For the red wine reduction sauce. 1. 1 cup red wine, such as Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot. 2. 1 half cup beef broth. 3. 1 shallot, finely chopped. 4. 2 cloves garlic, minced. 5. 1 tablespoon unsalted butter. 6. 1 teaspoon fresh rosemary or thyme leaves, finely chopped. 7. Salt and freshly ground black pepper, to taste. Instructions. Prepare the filet mignon. 1. Take the filet mignon steaks out of the refrigerator and let them sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes before cooking. 2. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit 200 degrees Celsius. Season the steaks. 1. Season both sides of the filet mignon steaks with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Sear the steaks. 1. In an oven-safe skillet, heat the olive oil over high heat until it's very hot. 1. You want the pan to be sizzling. 2. Carefully add the filet mignon steaks to the hot skillet and sear for about 2-3 minutes on each side until they develop a nice crust. 2. Add the minced garlic and fresh rosemary, or thyme, to the skillet during the searing process. Transfer to the oven. 1. Once seared, transfer the skillet with the steaks to the preheated oven. 1. Cook for about 5-7 minutes for medium rare, or adjust the time based on your preferred level of donuts, 7-10 minutes for medium, 10-15 minutes for medium well. 2. Use a meat thermometer to check the internal temperature. 2. For medium rare, it should be around 130,135 degrees Fahrenheit, 55-57 degrees Celsius. Rest the steaks. 1. Remove the skillet from the oven and transfer the steaks to a plate. 1. Tent them with aluminium foil and allow them to rest for 5-10 minutes. 1. Resting the steaks allows the juices to redistribute and keeps them tender. Prepare the red wine reduction sauce. 1. In the same skillet you used for the steaks, place it over medium heat. 2. Add the finely chopped shallot and cook for 2-3 minutes until it becomes translucent. 3. Stir in the minced garlic and cook for an additional 30 seconds. 4. Pour in the red wine and beef broth, scraping up any brown bits from the bottom of the pan with a wooden spoon. Reduce and thicken. 1. Let the sauce simmer and reduce by about half, which will take approximately 10-15 minutes. 2. Stir in the unsalted butter and fresh rosemary or thyme leaves. 3. Season the sauce with salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. Serve. 1. Pour the red wine reduction sauce over the rested filet mignon steaks. 2. Serve the filet mignon with red wine reduction hot and enjoy your delicious meal. This recipe will result in perfectly cooked filet mignon steaks with a rich and flavorful red wine reduction sauce. Adjust the cooking time to achieve your preferred level of donuts.